Greetings. We're doing something different to open this video. Okay, so sometime last year, about a hundred reviews ago, yeah, about a hundred reviews ago, I checked out a nice little racing game called Top Gear. Top Gear is, well, We'll replay the clips because it's been a while. In what would become a long-running racing franchise that would endure several console generations, Top Gear certainly has the key components in place for a rather enjoyable and slick racer on the Super NES. It's perhaps one of the best racers I've played on the console, and that has to be saying something considering this is a 1990. Yeah, well, that was a bald-faced lie. Don't get me wrong. I thought Top Gear was a nice, solid little racer, especially for an early SNES release. I like Top Gear quite a bit, but uh, you know what? Somewhere along the way, I played Top Gear 2. And it's so much better. Basically, the same, more the same great racing with some additions and changes that truly makes this a one of the finest racers on the Super Nintendo. Dare I say it, I enjoy it more than Super Mario Kart. Blasphemous, I'm sure, but also possibly true on my end. Meanwhile, somewhere in the Boston area, Robert Bob Chipman is weeping. Probably not because of this. Anyways, let's pop this in and let's check it out. I should probably plug that in first. Right off the bat, I'll say this. The one thing I hated about the original Top Gear was that you were always playing with that split screen layout during a single player campaign. I could somewhat accept that with Super Mario Kart, but not with this for some reason. Top Gear 2 resolves that and you now have the full screen to yourself, with the split screen appropriately reserved for two player contests. The end result of resolving what seems like a minor point of contention ends up making Top Gear 2 feel like a much bigger game and, while you'll want to be focusing on the racetrack itself for obvious reasons, you cannot help but marvel at the background scenery which does a fantastic job of representing each of the 60 plus cities that you get to race in. You even get tunnels to drive through, which is a pretty nifty thing. Did you get tunnels in Super Mario Kart? No. You don't. However, you did get some semblance of different cars in Super Mario Kart. Top Gear 2 sticks you with the same generic Lotus looking speed car that everybody else in the game has. A bit of a shame since the previous game had a couple different car models, but at least you could change the paint job, I guess. Oh well. But setting that aside, Top Gear 2 retains the same premise as before, as you partake in a global racing competition for the right to be called the best racer in the world. And that entails traveling across 16 countries or so, each one supporting about 3 or 4 tracks for you to race in. While you don't have to aim for the top spot to progress onwards, you're given an incentive to perform better as those who finish fastest will win more prize money and that usually results in being able to acquire upgrades to your vehicle. Whether it be better engines or gearboxes, or swapping between dry and wet tires to deal with the elements. And that's already more than what you got from the first game, so there's quite a bit of racing to be done here, and it's done really well. The tracks offer something of a decent challenge, though balance is not always the best in this regard, some tracks being easier than others either, even during the later portions of the game. Still, it's the same idea all around. Speed past cars, avoid collisions, collect pickups such as bonus money speed boosts and nitro boosters, of which you have a limited supply to use in moderation, and just be mindful of your fuel gauge or else you'll run out of fuel and lose anyways. In regards to control, it's just as good as it was in the previous game, easy to pick up, responsive, uncomplicated, and you can even choose from a number of different button configurations, including one where you use the triggers to control brakes and acceleration, which is what I personally use. Whatever setup you choose, Top Gear 2 offers impeccable control so any crashes into cars or other objects is all on you, as it should be. I've already said a good deal about the visual stylings of Top Gear 2, with the single player no longer having that split screen nonsense and giving the game a much grander sense of size as a result. The cars are well drawn even if they're not unique. The racing is nice and fast, some slow down on occasion but doesn't distract from the overall gameplay. The background scenery is quite nice, the tunnels are nicely rendered. The intermissions are nothing to write home about but otherwise Top Gear 2 is rather nice looking and pleasing to the eyes. 
Much like its predecessor, Top Gear 2 once again sports a rather modest collection of highly energetic and appropriately badass to driving tunes that get you pumped for a race. I actually liked the soundtrack here and thought they were good enough to burn onto a CD and play while doing some actual driving in real life. It's just that good a collection of tunes, much like the first game. The sound effects are also pretty good. The engine sounds, the revving, the screeching, none of it makes you want to rip your ears off and stop the pain. And that's a good thing, they're all well done, they all complement the rest of the game as well as the music. Thumbs up in that regard. Where Top Gear excelled, Top Gear 2 improves upon in every way possible. With a less cluttered screen, damage integration, and the ability to upgrade your vehicle while retaining the slick gameplay and visuals along with twice as many tracks as its predecessor, Top Gear 2 is one of the more satisfyingly enjoyable racing games to be found on the Super Nintendo. Perhaps one of the best racing games I've played on the console, Top Gear 2 is definitely a quality outing worth checking out.